What's up guys? It's your favorite YouTuber Jimmy Jams back up in the house. Okay, today's video is the latest news on Takashi 69. My man Johnny Fastlane got some more information on WAC 100 and Mike Tyson beefing. And we're going to get the daily scoop from Walt Liquor. Okay, but first guys, if you're new to this channel, make sure you Kung Fu Chop that subscribe button. We got a huge contest coming up and you're not going to want to miss that. Also, don't forget to ring that bell for notifications and feel free to share my ugly ass on any social media platform you choose. Okay, if you've been living in a cave, Takashi 69 got locked up last year on RICO charges, drug charges, conspiracy, all federal charges. He's in federal custody. Okay, so for all you that do know, he had struck a plea deal with the prosecution that he would testify against everybody um, in order to get his time suspended. So he, the prosecution seeks no jail time in the Takashi 69 case. All they needed him for was to testify against his co-defendants. Now, all of the co-defendants took a deal except for Kuda B. Also, Roe, which uh, they don't need Takashi 69 to testify. Apparently, Shoddy is going to testify against Roe, uh, maybe even Mel Murder. Okay, but back to the Kuda B thing. Kuda B last week, there was rumors that there was a deal offered to Kuda B. He was supposed to have took this deal, but he hasn't. Okay, because what we were thinking was Kuda B was going to sign this deal. Takashi's lawyer is going to motion the court for Takashi a bond hearing before his September court date. Now, Kuda B, apparently there's too much time on the table, and Kuda B didn't accept the deal. It's still in works. I don't know if they're negotiating the deal, but he has yet to accept this deal from the prosecution because I believe it carries too much time for Kuda B, and he thinks he might be able to beat this, which... It's not good because they caught Takashi on tape and saying that he had the 30 racks on, uh, well, a 30 pack on uh, Chief Keep's head. Now, he also, in his statement, said that, you know, that Kuda B had did this. Now, Takashi will not be able to go up for bond if Kuda B don't take this deal, which it don't look like Kuda B is going to take this deal, which is bad news for Takashi because now he can't get a bond hearing because they're going to need Takashi to testify against Kuda B, which is his homeboy. Guys, you know it's been rumored that Takashi is actually the one that came up with the money to bail Kuda B out. So you know how all these people Takashi talked on, Kuda B is probably his closest homeboy. He even named a song after him, and you know, now he has to tell on him, right? So apparently there's too much time on the table for Kuda B, or it, he didn't like the deal, or his lawyers didn't like the deal. They think maybe he could get a better deal. Because you gotta remember that Kuda B really ain't caught up in all these other Treyway crimes. He's only caught up and shooting at Chief Keefe, right? So, and he didn't shoot Chief Keefe, so, but, you know, with him being pulled into this federal charge, it's a little bit worse than if it wasn't a federal crime, right? If he wasn't caught up in this whole uh, superseding indictment. So, but he got himself in a world of trouble. Now it looks like he might fight this case. Kuda B might fight, which means Takashi is going to sit in jail to September to his court date. Now, we hope that ain't the case um, because I think that Kuda B probably will be convicted. Everybody else has took deals. Everybody else has told their guilt. Um, Suffer Row and, and Kuda B. But Takashi's not tied to the last person. Other Treyway members are going to testify against him. The only person that was left with Takashi that has anything to do with is Kuda B. So it could change. It could change at any moment. Today, Kuda B could go, okay, I'm going to take this deal. He could walk into the courtroom and right before court take the deal. So we don't know. But what we do know is without that deal being taken, Takashi's going to be stuck locked up. Well, if he's in a federal facility or a safe house or wherever he's at, he's going to be there. And, you know, we haven't heard nothing from Takashi, right? Not one word. You know he has access to phones, computers. Everybody that's incarcerated does, right? That's his right. So he could have put a word out by now, but he hasn't said one thing. We even had to track down what prison that he was in, and that's still just a rumor. So there's still a lot of rumors going on, but it, it's absolutely fact that everybody else has struck a deal, except for Kuda B that's caught up in this Takashi case, right? So as soon as he takes this deal, 
if he don't take it till he goes to court, Takashi, like I said, most likely will sit in jail until his September court date. But once he gets to court, he is going to be released. Um, he will be found guilty because he's pled guilty. He will be put on a ton of probation. And uh, he will have a ton of prison time suspended. And, you know, he violates that probation. Of course, he'll go back to prison to serve his prison time. So Takashi's going to have to get out, stay clean. And, you know, he got a lot of people mad at him because a lot of people call Takashi 6 9 snitch 9 now, right? You know, he told it. But technically, if he don't have to testify... He hasn't told but his part because we don't know what the other informants told, right? So we don't know if, if the FBI went to Takashi and said, oh, we already know this, we already know this, this person's told, this person's told, and we have enough to convict you, or you sign this paper, take this deal, and, and this is what we can do for you. So we don't really know exactly what Takashi said as far as snitching. We don't really know. We don't know what information they brought to Takashi for him to go okay let me go ahead and take this deal or they're gonna burn my ass right so but it looks like the only one that's gonna clearly walk from this is Takashi 69 and you know some of you would say well you know he was a follower he wasn't a leader of Trey Way these guys took advantage of him um, they were using him for his money but either way he was a part of it he put himself in that situation he went out he found these guys that were gangbangers to protect him and you know to blow up his uh his image, nobody did that but Takashi. So you can't really blame shoddy male murder, uh, ish, all these guys for what Takashi's done. He chose that life and, and it's kind of backfired on him. Now we'll see where Takashi goes from here, right? Is he still gonna be relevant? He's still gonna be making music? Or is he just gonna go in the hide and go lay low, take the millions that he's made and just hide out and live a, a normal life like a normal person? But anyway, we're going to jump over to Johnny Fastlane. He got some stuff on WAC 100 and Mike Tyson, right? Mike Tyson's crazy. Don't be messing with Mike Tyson, WAC 100. All right, Johnny, take it away. All right, y'all. This is crazy, right? Because, all right, WAC 100 last night does um, an interview on Mike Tyson's podcast, right? The Hot Boxing Podcast on Sirius XM. And I didn't even know uh, Mike Tyson had a podcast, right? But, all right, so Mike Tyson is interviewing uh, WAC 100, right? And for y'all that don't know, and you should know by now, you know, WAC 100 is a certified G, he's a blood, um, and he is the game's manager. He also manages Ray J and Blueface too, right? Um, WAC 100 also knocked out Stitches, you know, that rapper from Miami who has like the tattoos of like the Joker Stitches going all up his face, right? Uh, that was like years ago though, right? So anyway, WAC 100 is known for like throwing them hands, right? And then you got Mike Tyson who's like an all-time heavyweight champion. Obviously, Mike Tyson is known for throwing them hands, right? So. WAC 100 is going on record like time and time again talking shit about Tupac, right? Saying basically Tupac was a fake gangster, you know, that whole Machiavelli, you know, thing was like his persona, saying that Tupac really wasn't as gangster as everybody thinks he is. And WAC 100 even went on to say that, this is not yesterday, but WAC 100 even went on to say like once upon a time that Tupac was like bisexual or something like that, right? Um, so Tupac and Mike Tyson were really good friends before, you know, Tupac got killed, right? And Mike Tyson actually was one of the last people to even see Tupac alive, right? Because Tupac, the way that, the reason why he even got killed or the night that he got killed, he went to a Mike Tyson fight. So, uh, you know, Tupac went to the Mike Tyson fight. He was sitting in the front row. After the fight in the lobby of the casino that the fight was at, um, you know, there was a huge thing and Orlando Anderson got jumped by a bunch of bloods. Suge Knight was there. Tupac was there. And then Orlando Anderson kind of felt like, you know, I feel like Orlando Anderson could have like took an ass whooping from a bunch of bloods. You know, Orlando Anderson was a notoriously known crip, right? From California. He's dead now. But Orlando Anderson could have took an ass whooping from some bloods, but he took an ass whooping from this dude who he looked at just like WAC 100 looked at as some kind of fake gangster. And that, you know, some rapper is going to fucking try to stomp me out or, or throw punches at me? Oh, hell nah. And that's why, you know, Orlando Anderson ended up killing Tupac. 
Uh, but Orlando Anderson is dead anyway right now, so you know, whatever, right? They never figured it out before he died. Now they know, but he's dead now, so nobody, you know. Anyway, <laughs> that's, that's a whole nother thing, right? But back to Wack 100 and Mike Tyson, though, right? So, you know, Mike Tyson asks, you know, um, Wack 100 about Tupac. Like, yo, I heard you was talking about Tupac, basically, right? And Wack 100 ain't no punk, ain't no pussy, ain't no bitch, right? So Wack 100 was like, I said what I said type shit, right? Um, and then they got to tussling, yo, which is crazy, right? But, you know, nobody pulled out guns. Nobody from Wack 100's crew was like, yo, fuck that shit. You better shoot this nigga, uh, Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson's people wasn't on no, you know, get Wack 100 type shit. Nothing like that, you know what I'm saying? They had a little tussle, and I think that both men separated with even, I think, more respect for each other than what they had when they, you know, went in there in the first place, right? So I th also think Wack 100 wants to be you know, the one to say like, yo, I fought Mike Tyson, you know what I'm saying? Because like, how many people can say like, I fought, I went toe to toe and squared up with Mike Tyson, right? So, it's funny, man. The interview didn't come out yet, but WAC 100, the reason why anybody even knows all of this is because WAC 100 went straight to his Instagram uh, and let everybody know, right? So he went to the pharmacy. He went and got some painkillers. He, he went and got something for his head. He said that his head hurt. Like, this is fire, though, right? Because Wack 100 was actually a good-ass sport, like, about this whole situation, right? But then again, it's also promotion for, um, you know, Mike Tyson's podcast. And I don't think that anybody would look like a punk or a bitch or anything if they say, like, I got beat up by Mike Tyson. And that's, that's not even really what Wack 100 is saying. Wack, well, I don't think he will say that. But what he is saying is, yo, Mike Tyson still got them hands. He's still quick with it. And, uh, and he ain't no bitch so you know that kind of means that you know Mike Tyson put the powers on me but it's all cool it, you know it's, it's two men um, and, and that's what it used to be back in the day right so like Mike Tyson and Wack 100 are both from an era where it's like you know you throw them hands and then you respect each other because you did that right not everybody always going to guns and shooting it out and this and that because niggas can't fight and then what happens the innocent bystander gets killed or something like that you know what I'm saying so this was cool right um, let me know what y'all think about this in the comments. Thanks for that, Johnny. That is absolutely crazy. Okay, so we're going to jump over to Walt for the Daily Scoop. Take it away, Walt. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I done, I done see some shit right now. It's making me laugh. Whoa, my nigga, Rodimy. Hold on, my nigga. Hold on, Rodimy. 50 say you owe him 300 K, my nigga, you owe this nigga 300,000 pennies, my nigga? Like, hold on, my nigga. I owed the nigga 3K. Hmm. That mean you died on the show this season, my nigga. That's definitely mean you died on the show this season. Rodney, call me, my nigga. I can get this shit fixed for us, my nigga. 300K? Goddamn, 50 of... That nigga's a... I ain't... Man, you's a bit Man. What's up, y'all? This is me, Walt Licker, giving you the best in hip hop daily news 50 cents now 50 cents is trying to get all his money from every single person mr fofty himself 50 cents has been using social media lately to demand the repayment of loans he claims to have made to pals now 50 cents he's been asking a lot of people already to pay up his money you know if you owe 50 cents some money give it up he wants it back so his power co-star Rodimy is the latest target on his online debt collectors act. Now 50 cents lent Rodimir money two years ago so that Rodimir could boost up his singing career. Now the trouble started Friday when Rodimy 
boosted on Instagram that his new EP, Walk With Me, had gone to the top of the R&B charts. See, yo, so I feel like I gotta address this, man. So niggas calling me talking about I owe 50 money, 50 saying I owe money. Listen, bro, I don't owe 50 money. The thing is, my, my record number one, I just bought a crib, I'm taking care of my family, everything. So the fact that I'm hearing this, man, like, why now? Why wait till Walk With Me is number one on the R&B charts? Why would you wait till my project is number one on the R&B charts to bring something up like this, bro? I don't owe you, bro. You know, so crazy. So I just wanted to address it and, and keep it light, but that's 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 crazy. That's crazy. On Wednesday, Fiddy read it on him on Instagram video with the caption, "My man, you own an outstanding three hundred thousand. Now walk with me to the bank." Yo, so I feel like I gotta address this, man. So niggas call me talking about I owe 50 money. You do owe me money. Listen, bro, I don't owe 50 money. The thing is, you independent I'm now. I just bought a crib. That's right, you owe I'm me 300,000. Everything, so the fact that I'm here in this, man. Like, oh, you a Fort Lee, nigga? Why wait till Walker this nigga in Jersey now? On the army charts. Why would you wait till my That's when I want my fucking money, money nigga. You number one. Like now you could pay me my money. You with Gazi now? Do I need to call Gazi direct? In the past year, the in the club rapper had gone after a string of other stars online, claiming that they owe him an unpaid debt. Even though we have heard that him and Fifty were in good terms. Meanwhile, Snoop Doggy Dog even leaped into the tray, offering to pay Rodney alleged debt for him. Fifty. I'm gonna pay you with Rotimi owe you, cuz. Cause I don't want him to get killed on power. I think you're gonna kill him next. Cause he owe you money. Don't kill him. I'm gonna pay him for you. How much he owe you, cuz? Let's talk about it. Let's figure it out, 50. Don't kill him. I pay him for you. Rotimi, I got you, cuz. Nigerian. I have your back. Well, there you have it. Rotimi owes 50 money. 300,000 at that. What do you think is going to happen? Let me know in the comments below. Well, that is all I got. Please like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. And push notification bell to receive notifications every time I upload new videos. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Well, excuse the fuck out of me. I'm stressed out this morning. Look, everybody be talking about 50 Cent, a.k.a. the ghetto salad mate, a.k.a. more tougher than ISIS. But now, Rodney owe him 300000 for the white people. That's 300000 Tierra Marie only owed him 20 k And she, he been on her ass for, for, for 18 years. Shit, the word on the street is the tooth fairy took a tooth from 50 and then paid him. And now that bitch paralyzed. Now, if nigga owe you 300000 that's all with a grandma. Ass. I I'll beat the Pope's ass over 300,000. And, and I know Rodney lying because he made a video saying, You know talking about? I owe 50 money, 50 cents, I owe money. Listen, bro, I don't owe 50 money. The thing is, <laughs> anytime a nigga say, The thing is, everything after that is bullshit. Oh, the thing is, I, yeah, I spent the night, but I didn't fuck her. You see how that sound? Pay this man his money before he verbally whoop your ass on social media with your dumb ass. Like always, guys, I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in. We're almost at the 26,000 mark in subscribers. We couldn't do it without each and every one of you. So make sure if you're new here, guys, Kung Fu Chop It. Give this video a like. Ring that bell for notifications. And feel free to share your boy, Jimmy Jams' his ugly face on any social media platform that you choose. And, guys, I will see you all in the next video. Peace.